Well, the Congressional Budget Office is trying to help us be less surprised by the cost. On November 2nd, they issued this report to Congressman Charles Rangel, and it said that an individual earning $44,000 a year and therefore ineligible for any kind of subsidy would be expected to pay about 17% of pre-tax income, adjusted gross income, for premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. A family household earning $102,000 would be expected to shell out a whopping 20% of pre-tax income <clears throat> for a health plan pre -tax and co-pays. Pre-tax, right. So the net hit is going to be even greater, and it, could, of be, course, of and it course. could be very tough for a lot of families. That's right. So this is going to become a really big part of your household budget. But we are told over and over again that this will ultimately reduce our health care costs. It seems unlikely, but I'm not into forecasting. What I can tell you is that seniors are bearing the brunt under this bill. The bill reduces future Medicare funding by almost $500 billion at a time when 30% more people are expected to enroll in Medicare as the baby boomers reach 65. And in addition, this bill moves Medicare gradually from fee-for-service, meaning seniors have a lot of freedom to choose when to go to a specialist, into what's called a medical home, which is this decade's version of managed care. And the Congressional Budget Office just uh, last December warned that this medical home would probably use cost-cutting measures that were very unpopular in the early 1990s and, in fact, were outlawed uh, in some states because they were so harmful to patients, like the withhold. Higher tax states tend to be on the coast because incomes are up, cost of livings are higher. So in other words, you got a percentage on an income, you're going to pay more just because you're probably making more money than someone in the center of the country simply because your cost of living is up. This is causing a massive migration from states like New York. In fact, one and a half million New York state residents have left the state in the last eight years, and the people that are leaving have a higher income that are, than the people that are moving into the state. Believe this me, sounds a like a very slippery slope of cost burden. Well, clearly it is going to add to the cost burdens of, of higher middle income families and high earners. And states like New York usually lose in those circumstances. 